Prince Andrew did acknowledge he let down the royal family. What if a royal we thought we knew was hiding something all along? For decades, Prince Philip was seen as the steadfast pillar of the British monarchy. But now, King Charles and Prince Andrew have come forward with revelations that will shake the very foundation of this legacy. My family and I miss my father enormously. He was a, a much-loved and appreciated figure. It turns out that the late Duke of Edinburgh wasn't just the sharp-tongued royal we saw in public. There's a hidden side to him that few could have imagined. And the truth? This is terrible. Brace yourself, because the untold story of their father is about to change everything. Prince Philip, the public image versus the private man. Prince Philip, the Duke of Edinburgh, was a man synonymous with duty and service. As Queen Elizabeth II's consort, he stood beside her through the most turbulent and historic moments of the 20th and 21st centuries. Known for his sharp wit, often tinged with controversy, he had a reputation for speaking his mind, a quality that endeared him to some and left others questioning his judgment. His military background and stoic demeanor reflected the old world values he fiercely upheld, projecting an image of strength, tradition, and loyalty to the British monarchy. For over seven decades, Philip carried out his public role with a sense of duty that often bordered on relentless. He made over 22,000 solo public appearances and cemented himself as one of the most dedicated members of the royal family. Whether presiding over international engagements or supporting charities like the Duke of Edinburgh's award, he was the epitome of royal steadfastness. The public saw him as the dutiful husband, the father of four, and the figure who never faltered in supporting the Queen. Yet, while the public eye captured this version of Prince Philip, it only scratched the surface of who he truly was. Behind the scenes, a much more complex man existed, a figure whose private life remained shrouded in mystery. Now, King Charles and Prince Andrew are finally pulling back the curtain and revealing aspects of their father that had remained hidden for decades. These revelations are not just personal, they expose a side of the Duke that will change how history views him. And as they step forward with these untold truths, one thing becomes clear. King Charles and Prince Andrew finally reveal the untold truth about their father, Prince Philip. Charles and Andrew's revelations offer a glimpse into a father who struggled with expressing his emotions and often resorted to a strict, no-nonsense approach in his household. Philip's expectations for his sons were sky-high, and at times this led to tension. He demanded discipline and honor, traits that shaped both Charles and Andrew. But it also left scars, ones that are only now beginning to heal. This is terrible, Charles admitted, while reflecting on the emotional distance that sometimes existed between them. But this is just the beginning of the story. Philip's private frustrations with modernity, the role of the monarchy, and even his children's choices were kept hidden from the public. He adhered to tradition, and when his sons sought to carve their own paths, those tensions flared. It wasn't just family matters at stake. Philip was deeply invested in ensuring the survival and continuity of the monarchy, even if it came at the cost of personal sacrifice. And as these revelations come to light, the image of the Duke of Edinburgh as a mere figurehead supporting the Queen begins to unravel, revealing the complex and troubled man beneath the relationship between Prince Philip and his sons. The relationship between Prince Philip and his sons, King Charles and Prince Andrew, was far from straightforward. Both Charles and Andrew inherited their father's strong sense of duty, yet their personalities and approaches to life couldn't have been more different. These differences shaped the often complex and strained dynamics between father and sons dynamics that would come to define the course of their relationships for decades. From a young age, King Charles was seen as a sensitive, thoughtful boy, qualities that did not align with Prince Philip's traditional ideals of masculinity. Where Charles sought intellectual and emotional exploration, 
Philip believed in grit, discipline, and action. This difference became a point of tension early on. Philip was a product of a military upbringing and deeply rooted in the customs of the British aristocracy. He expected his son to follow a similar path. He enrolled Charles in Gordonstown, a remote and notoriously rigorous boarding school in Scotland, where Philip had studied as a boy. It was a decision that would have lasting consequences. Charles famously struggled at Gordonstown. The harsh conditions and physical demands clashed with his introverted and reflective nature. Philip, however, saw this as an opportunity to toughen up his eldest son, to prepare him for the heavy responsibilities that came with being the future king. But Charles didn't thrive in this environment. The isolation and lack of emotional support only deepened the divide between father and son. For years, Philip's insistence on traditional values and Charles's search for emotional expression created a gap that neither seemed able to bridge. Charles is known for his deep thinking and progressive ideas. Philip was a man of action, always looking forward, while Charles is more inclined toward contemplation and caution. Their frequent misunderstandings, particularly when it came to the role of the monarchy in the modern world, only served to widen the chasm between them. Philip viewed Charles's hesitancy to fully embrace his future role with frustration, seeing it as a weakness. Meanwhile, Charles saw his father's brusque manner as emotionally distant and unsupportive. Prince Andrew had a relationship with Prince Philip that was altogether different. Andrew was often seen as Philip's favorite because he was more aligned with his father's bold and outgoing nature. As a child, Andrew was confident, charismatic, and more willing to embrace the life of royalty without the same reservations that plagued his older brother. Philip admired Andrew's zest for life, his military career, and his ability to charm those around him, qualities that mirrored Philip's own. However, even the bond between Philip and Andrew had its complexities. While Andrew may have been more in tune with his father's values, he wasn't immune to the pressures of living up to the Duke's high expectations. While Philip had more patience with Andrew, there were still times when father and son clashed over personal decisions, particularly when it came to Andrew's personal life and public image. These disagreements, though not as pronounced as those with Charles, still left their mark. Although they shared many similarities, the burden of being compared to his older brother, who was destined to be king, created a sense of pressure that Andrew struggled with. Philip was determined to guide both sons in his vision of royal responsibility. But sometimes he failed to recognize the individual challenges each faced. Yet despite these conflicts, Prince Philip's love for his sons was never in doubt. His stern exterior and often unforgiving expectations were, in his eyes, the necessary tools to mold Charles and Andrew into leaders fit for their roles within the monarchy. Philip came from a generation that believed in tough love, where emotional distance was seen as a way to instill resilience. But in modern times, and particularly for Charles, this approach often felt cold and isolating. Ultimately, Philip's relationships with his sons were shaped by the clash between tradition and modernity, between old school discipline and a world increasingly focused on emotional well-being. It was a relationship filled with love and respect, but also misunderstanding. Above all, it was one that left an indelible mark on both Charles and Andrew. And now, as the brothers finally reveal the untold truth about their father, the world is beginning to see the Duke of Edinburgh in a whole new light and beyond the public figure he presented. King Charles's reflections on Prince Philip. As King Charles reflects on his father, Prince Philip, a deep respect for his values is evident. The Duke of Edinburgh represented a bygone era of duty, tradition, and steadfastness, qualities that Charles admired. But while Charles understood and appreciated his father's unwavering commitment to the monarchy and the family, their relationship was frequently strained by clashing views. Where Philip held tight to a rigid, 
traditional vision of royalty, Charles longed to modernize it. This fundamental difference in their approaches to monarchy and life was the source of tension and misunderstanding. From a young age, Charles felt the weight of expectation pressing down on him. His father's vision of strength meant embodying discipline and a stiff upper lip. These qualities did not come naturally to Charles. Prince Philip's life was shaped by military rigor and a sense of unquestionable duty. He was a man of action, a problem solver who believed in getting things done without letting emotions interfere. Charles, on the other hand, was introspective, sensitive, and intellectual, traits that often left him at odds with his father's more practical mindset. As we mentioned before, one of the most defining points of conflict between father and son came early in Charles's life when Prince Philip sent him to Gordonstoun School in Scotland. For Philip, the school was a place that had forged his character and toughness, and he believed it would do the same for Charles. But for the young prince, Gordonstoun was nothing short of miserable. Isolated from home and surrounded by the cold, unforgiving Scottish wilderness, Charles struggled to adapt to the physical hardships and relentless expectations. Charles's letters home from Gordonstoun reveal the depth of his unhappiness. He wrote on more than one occasion how difficult the experience was for him. While Philip believed in pushing his son beyond his comfort zone, Charles found the environment stifling and emotionally draining. His natural disposition leaned toward the arts and intellectual pursuits, not the physical toughness and endurance that Gordon Stown demanded. This pivotal experience created a rift between Charles and Philip, one that would take years to fully mend. The differences between father and son were not limited to education. As Charles grew older and began to develop his own views on the role of the monarchy in a rapidly changing world, he often found himself at odds with Philip's more conservative stance. Philip saw the monarchy as an institution that needed to remain stable, unchanging, and above all, traditional. Charles, however, felt the monarchy should evolve and embrace a more compassionate and accessible approach to its people. This was especially evident in Charles's environmental activism and his outspoken views on social issues, causes that Philip privately admired but felt were not appropriate for public royal involvement. Tensions came to the forefront during Charles's early years as the Prince of Wales, when his ideas on how to modernize the royal family began to take shape. Charles advocated for a more hands-on, personal approach to monarchy, one that connected with ordinary people in a direct and meaningful way. Philip, however, saw this as a deviation from the dignified, distant presence that royals were traditionally expected to maintain. In one memorable instance, Charles proposed the idea of conducting a televised documentary to showcase the royal family's day-to-day -day lives, hoping to make the monarchy appear more relatable. Philip was skeptical and worried that such exposure would erode the mystique of the royal institution. The documentary, Royal Family, aired in 1969. It was a success in terms of public engagement, but it left Philip feeling uncomfortable with the level of intrusion into their personal lives. For him, this was a classic example of Charles's tendency to blur the lines between public duty and private life. The strain between Charles and Philip also extended into their personal relationship. While Philip never shied away from offering advice, often in the form of blunt, sometimes harsh words, Charles craved emotional support and affirmation, things Philip struggled to provide. Charles often found his father's directness and practicality difficult to bear, especially in moments of personal crisis. One such moment came in the lead-up to Charles's marriage to Diana. Philip, ever the pragmatist, viewed marriage as a duty rather than a romantic partnership. He encouraged Charles to marry quickly and fulfill his royal obligations, a stance that only added to the pressure Charles was already feeling. In the years that followed, the breakdown of Charles and Diana's marriage would become one of the most public 
and painful episodes of his life. While Philip tried to counsel his son through the challenges of royal life, his approach was often too rigid to address the emotional complexities of the situation. Charles, reflecting on those years, has spoken about how he wished his father could have been more understanding, more empathetic. Despite these tensions, King Charles has never wavered in his respect for his father's dedication to the monarchy. In his later years, Charles came to understand that Philip's strict, traditional approach was not born out of a lack of love, but rather a deep sense of duty and responsibility. Philip wanted to prepare his son for the enormous burdens that came with being the future king, and in doing so, sometimes overlooked Charles's need for emotional connection. As he shares his perspective, it becomes clear that while Prince Philip's influence was profound, the emotional distance between them was a burden Charles carried for much of his life. Prince Andrew's bond and challenges with his father. Prince Andrew's relationship with Prince Philip was, in many ways, the opposite of the one his older brother shared with their father. Andrew seemed to align more closely with his father's bold, outgoing personality. This alignment, however, didn't spare Andrew from the weight of expectation, and it certainly didn't shield him from the pressures of being a royal. In fact, at times, it only heightened them. As we saw before from an early age, Andrew was seen as the more confident and adventurous son, traits that Philip admired. Andrew's charisma and extroverted nature meant he was more comfortable in the spotlight. Philip, ever the action-oriented figure, appreciated Andrew's decisiveness and willingness to take on challenges headfirst. In Philip's eyes, Andrew embodied many of the qualities he believed were essential for a royal. Strength, charm, and a sense of duty. This often made him the favorite in their father's eyes, much to the quiet frustration of his siblings. For Andrew, being viewed as Philip's favorite son was both a blessing and a burden. On one hand, it afforded him more of his father's attention and approval. On the other, it placed an unspoken expectation on him to live up to the Duke of Edinburgh's high standards. And while Andrew was often more in sync with Philip than Charles, he wasn't immune to the pressures that came with being in the shadow of his older brother, the future king. Andrew's early military career is one of the clearest examples of how he sought to carve out his own identity while living up to his father's expectations. Joining the Royal Navy like Philip before him, Andrew was determined to prove himself. He embraced the challenges of military life and his bravery during the Falklands War in 1982 earned him significant respect both within the armed forces and from his father. Philip, himself a decorated naval officer, was undoubtedly proud of Andrew's service. Yet despite his accomplishments, Andrew often felt the weight of comparison to his brother. Charles, with his future as king guaranteed, was always at the forefront of public attention. No matter how much Andrew achieved, he couldn't escape the reality that his older brother's role would always eclipse his own. This sense of being overshadowed was a source of personal frustration, something Andrew himself has admitted over the years. The pressure to maintain Philip's approval only intensified as Andrew entered adulthood. While Andrew's public image as a dashing naval officer was one of strength and success, his private life was more complicated. His relationships, particularly his high-profile marriage to Sarah Ferguson, became a point of contention within the royal family. Philip was not blind to the strains on Andrew's marriage, and he made his opinions known. Although Philip had a soft spot for Andrew, he wasn't shy about expressing his disappointment when Andrew's personal life began to attract negative attention. In fact, some of the most difficult moments between Andrew and Philip occurred during the breakdown of Andrew's marriage. Sarah Ferguson's public image at times clashed with the more reserved, dignified front that the royal family sought to project. Philip struggled with the media attention surrounding Andrew and Sarah's relationship. While Philip supported Andrew through many challenges, the ongoing public scrutiny became a source of strain for both father 
and son. As Andrew navigated the turbulence of his personal life, he found himself increasingly at odds with his father's expectations. Philip, for all his affection for Andrew, expected nothing less than total dedication to the royal family's image and duties. Andrew, however, began to chafe under these demands, particularly as he found himself in the media spotlight for all the wrong reasons. Despite these challenges, Andrew and Philip maintained a close bond. Even during difficult times, Philip remained a figure of support for his second son, albeit with his characteristic bluntness. Philip's approach to fatherhood, especially with Andrew, was less about emotional nurturing and more about pushing his son to meet the high standards he set for himself. In his later years, Andrew has spoken about the complexities of his relationship with Philip. While there was deep love and respect, there were also moments of tension and misunderstanding. Andrew, like Charles, recognized that Philip's love often came in the form of high expectations and tough lessons. For Andrew, living up to his father's example was always a challenge, but it was a challenge he embraced. The untold truth, what Charles and Andrew have finally revealed. One of the most shocking revelations from both Charles and Andrew is the intense pressure Philip placed on himself to live up to the expectations of his role. Though he appeared outwardly strong and resolute, Philip carried a burden that he rarely shared with those around him. The strain of being the Queen's consort while supporting her in the background without taking center stage weighed heavily on him. According to Charles, Philip often struggled with the notion of being in a position where he had to suppress his own ambitions to serve the monarchy. He was frustrated, Charles revealed in an interview. This is terrible, but there were moments when he questioned whether he had sacrificed too much of himself for the sake of duty. This inner turmoil was something Philip rarely expressed publicly. Many assumed that Philip took everything in stride. But Charles and Andrew now reveal that behind closed doors, Philip had moments of self-doubt and vulnerability. Andrew, in particular, has spoken about the times when Philip would confide in him about the personal challenges he faced. He loved the Queen and the monarchy, but there were times when he felt trapped, Andrew said. He wanted to be more than just the figure behind the throne, but duty always came first. He knew he had to stay in his role, no matter how much it weighed on him. One of the most startling revelations involves Philip's relationship with the modern world. While he was often seen as a man out of step with the changing times, Charles and Andrew suggest that Philip's resistance to modernity was more complex than it seemed. Philip, they reveal, was deeply concerned about the survival of the monarchy in a world that was becoming increasingly skeptical of tradition. He was torn, Charles explained. He believed in tradition, but he also knew that the world was changing in ways that threatened the monarchy's very existence. This is terrible, but he felt powerless to adapt in a way that would protect the institution without compromising everything he stood for. In private, Philip often confided in Charles about his fears that the royal family was becoming too distant from the public and that, without significant change, the monarchy could lose its relevance. Yet at the same time, Philip feared that too much change would undermine the very traditions that had sustained the royal family for centuries. This internal conflict was a constant source of frustration for Philip and it left him feeling as though he was constantly walking a tightrope between preservation and progress. Andrew, too, has spoken about the hidden struggles his father faced. According to him, Philip's public image as a tough, stoic figure hid the fact that he often felt isolated within the royal family. He felt misunderstood, even within our own family, Andrew admitted. He was a man of few words when it came to expressing his emotions, but that didn't mean he didn't feel deeply. He just didn't know how to show it in the way that people expected. Andrew went on to reveal that Philip sometimes felt disconnected from his own children, particularly in his later years, as the generational gap between them became more pronounced. Another key revelation 
revolves around Philip's relationship with his own identity as a royal consort. Though he played his role with dignity and commitment, Philip often struggled with being in the shadow of the Queen. Charles and Andrew both highlight how difficult it was for Philip to reconcile his own sense of purpose with his position as the Queen's supportive partner. He had his own ambitions, Charles explained, but those ambitions were always secondary to supporting my mother. That took a toll on him, even though he would never admit it openly. This is terrible, but there were times when he felt as though he had lost himself in the role. Perhaps most surprisingly, Charles and Andrew reveal that Philip's sharp, sometimes abrasive public persona was a form of self-defense. According to them, Philip used his well-known bluntness to mask his own insecurities. People saw him as tough, and in many ways he was, Andrew said. But that toughness was also a way to protect himself from feeling vulnerable. He didn't want people to see that he had doubts or fears. He felt that as the Queen's consort, he had to project strength at all times, even when he didn't feel it. One of the most heartbreaking aspects of these revelations is the sense of isolation that Philip often felt, even within his own family. Charles and Andrew recall times when their father would retreat emotionally, unable to express what was troubling him. He carried so much on his own, Charles reflected. This is terrible, but he didn't always let us in. He didn't want to burden us with his struggles, so he kept a lot to himself. But in doing so, he sometimes made it harder for us to understand him. In the end, the untold truth about Prince Philip is not just about the challenges he faced, but about the legacy he left behind. As his sons reveal these hidden aspects of his life, they are ensuring that his story is remembered in its entirety, flaws, complexities and all. By revealing the untold truths about their father, Charles and Andrew have allowed the public to see the man behind the royal title. The father who battled his own sense of duty, questioned his role, and wrestled with the pressures of living in the shadow of the Queen. These revelations don't tarnish Philip's legacy, but instead add depth to it. They show a man who was shaped by the era he was born into, but who also quietly suffered under the immense weight of responsibility. His toughness was not just a reflection of his character, but a mask that concealed his own struggles with identity, purpose, and family dynamics. King Charles's and Prince Andrew's willingness to open up about their father has also shifted how the public views the royal family as a whole. Their transparency breaks from the traditional royal reserve, showing that even the monarchy is not immune to the challenges of family relationships, personal hardships, and the complexities of emotional life. By admitting that their father wasn't perfect, Charles and Andrew made the monarchy seem more real and more connected to the human experience. Do you think Prince Philip's relationships with his sons had an impact on the way the public views the royal family? Tell us in the comments. We'd love to hear. For now, we're done. Catch you in the next video.